Right now, people are starting to leave Florida ahead of Hurricane Milton. This is a live look at traffic on I-75 headed out of Tampa. People on Florida's west coast are bracing for the storm. This is a powerful Category 5 storm, and it's moving closer to landfall. And right now, there's concern outside of the hurricane itself because people there are bracing for the storm surge. We're told it could reach between 10 and 15 feet in the Tampa Bay area. And as they prepare, people are stocking up on sandbags and storm supplies, along with filling up their gas tanks as they head out to safer areas. You got to get, yeah, out. You gotta that's, get out. That's what it is. Take it seriously. Make sure you have a lot of food, you know, a lot of water, uh, all everything you need. We got the storm shutters up. We got food. We got wine. So <laughs> we're going to try and prepare, you know, try and be prepared. She's the one that needs the wine because she's nervous. <laughs> Oh, the National Hurricane Center says Milton is about 480 miles from the coast. Its sustained winds have reached 165 miles per hour. And forecasters are using a lot of terms that you may or may not be familiar with as they track Hurricane Milton. Meteorologist Chris Mulcahy tonight from our Charlotte sister station explains rapid intensification. During any given hurricane season, you're likely going to hear the term rapid intensification. So let's raise that weather IQ on what it is. Rapid intensification is when a tropical cyclone, so either a tropical depression, tropical storm, or hurricane, increases their maximum sustained wind speed by 35 miles per hour or more within a 24 hour period. That might not seem like a lot, but that 35 mile per hour boost could be the difference of one to two categories on the Saffir Simpson scale. For example, a hurricane is a category two with a sustained max wind of 100 miles per hour. A 35 mile per hour increase brings the sustained winds to 135. That's category four and a similar peak to Hurricane Hugo. The ideal setup for rapid intensification is low wind shear, a tropical air mass without impeding dry air and ocean temperatures above 80 degrees. But sea surface temperatures from 85 to 90 degrees are like jet fuel. The most significant rapid intensification on record was Hurricane Patricia back in 2015. Patricia rolled over waters that were up to 88 degrees. Patricia was a category one hurricane with max sustained winds of 85 miles per hour on October 22nd. 24 hours later, it was a monster category five West Mexico with winds up to 205 miles per hour. That's a 120 mile per hour increase. Rapid intensification is becoming more and more common and problematic, where 70% of all of our billion dollar tropical cyclones rapidly intensified. So we end up hearing all this information and you just wonder what makes Floridians stay. I think there a lot of times they're hearing the news and it seems like every hurricane you're saying, you know, get out, evacuate. This is the worst storm. And people decide to ride it out. Right. Uh, I wouldn't want to be put in that position yeah. to decide, but I think some of them think it's my home. I don't want to leave it. If we're talking and, about those that decide not to leave. Right. And not everybody has a choice. Mm. So right. We get and that. Uh, with Helene, I heard uh, a lady uh, speak about the fact that if she moved inland, she could be in danger even inland. Mm. And those buildings weren't probably as highly rated as the coastal buildings. Interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Because of building standards based on how close you are to the water. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So, and it, being un, in an unfamiliar area too. Mm. So yeah. It, it's tough. I've got a friend that had to fly her son back up from, from college down there. Mm. Wow. Yeah, a lot of the universities just shut down. Mm -hmm. You got to get out. Yeah. Yep. So. We're going to be talking about this for days and weeks, much like we did with Helene as the cleanup continues. And we've seen the piles of debris from Helene. That's going to be a concern with landfalling Hurricane Milton as well. Add to that uh, the threat of tornadoes, the hurricane force winds, the flooding and the storm surge. We're going to continue to keep you updated. Back up to a category five late this afternoon, early this evening with winds at 165 miles per hour. I mentioned that storm surge. It does look to peak in and just south of the Tampa area, 10 to perhaps as much as 15 feet. That's a real concern for the west coast of Florida. The other concern, the tropical storm force winds that will start to arrive tomorrow afternoon, early evening from Tampa south through Cape Coral, even into the Naples area, and then those hurricane force winds later tomorrow night with landfall into the early part of Thursday. They're still going to be dealing with tropical storm force winds, maybe even hurricane force winds through Orlando, even 
even into Thursday afternoon and evening before this storm system departs. Future Track 13 shows the track headed toward the Tampa area late tomorrow night. Early Thursday morning should be just offshore when you join us Wednesday at 11 o'clock, but they're obviously going to be dealing with the impacts of Hurricane Milton already really starting first thing tomorrow morning. The storm then exits the east coast of Florida Thursday evening. Closer to home, we've got sunshine across central Indiana. This is a live view over downtown. It's 72. Winds are west northwest at 14. 72 also the high for the day, pretty close to the average of 69. But keep that number in mind as we look ahead to Friday and Saturday as we forecast highs close to 80 degrees. It's going to be warm for October. Cool again tonight in the 40s, so grab the sweatshirt early tomorrow. Won't need it tomorrow afternoon. Sunny mid 70s. We're in the low 70s on Thursday. Rain chances zero until the early part of next week. That's when we get a big weather pattern change on the other side of those two warm days, 78 Friday, 80 degrees on Saturday. The change starts to arrive Sunday. We are cool next week. A few showers Monday, Tuesday with highs only highs only in the 50s.